I had to like let go of like my closest friends in order to like I guess level up. I live in fear. And I feel like and and I live uncomfortable, which is why I've been able to do so much. This is what I think about all the time. <laughs> the teachers need more respect and they need to be paid better because that's a big reason why like I left teaching. Sliding in the school, you know my album coming soon. soon until we get this rap money trap gonna have to boom. We're on air with air. Welcome back, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for fixing my uh, sticker, our sticker, Dad, THC. Originally, historical lesson right quick before we act, but we're already rolling, but THC was originally the Hialeah Chicos, my dad's group. And then, uh, you know, I've, I've, I haven't had the luxury of having a, a rap group yet, so I kind of just, it was the Hialeah Chico. And now it's the Aircast. And today we have a special guest, Christy V, on the Aircast. Hello. <laughs> wow, I guess the, the British version of Chris TV. What's up? Hi. I'm British too, eh? Hi. I, I talk like that too, man. It's uh, a little Australian British. My mom is from Australia, my dad is Brit. So I'm a little bit both. Um, Practicing accents. Yeah, I just, I don't know, sometimes I do an accent. It just comes out naturally. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on them. I'm, I'm trying to get uh, my want to be an actor one day but i also want to be a voice actor i want to be like an actor that's you know i, I could, do that could play garfield one day i do voice acting really yeah. what have you done already okay so um i've been trying to get into voice acting for like three years and finally i tapped into it because i got like a lot of work like extra work and whatever and now i'm getting like major roles okay like i've done like a polish uh tv series that was like the longest running one i'm doing an anime now um, I'm doing like a little boy. Anything we it's could like put here for them to check out? Anything currently out or it's going to come out soon? Um, to be honest, so, so the anime is on Netflix. We're doing season three right now. One and two are out right now with you on it? No, no, no. Okay, no. you're a new character Yeah, in right, three. I wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What is, what's the name of the anime so everybody can be caught up with the storyline? Uh, so it's when called it out. Wakfu. Wakfu. Yeah, W-A-T. Okay. We're going to drop it here. F-U. Not really you, but... <laughs> hey, it's actually you listening at home. <laughs> yeah, so Waifu, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Can, can you give us, um, I guess, a synopsis of just general idea of like what kind of what the Wikipedia would say, what the show's about? Okay, so I don't really know. Oh, okay. Um, so the thing with voice acting is that you go in, they give you the storyline of like the scene that you're doing. And so they it's give you very direction. Like, yeah, well, kind of. They're just like, oh, let's watch the scene. And then you go in and you have maybe like a couple lines, six lines, whatever. So that sounds like a regular script. I, I've written, I've mm-hmm. written screenplays before. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's out yet, but coming soon. Anyway, <laughs> but like it's it's interior, exterior describes the the setting, and then it's just dialogue. That's what. You, so no, it doesn't okay. describe the setting at all. It's literally like screen, screen, and then timestamp on the bottom. And so the lines have a, each line has a timestamp to show your delivery and how to deliver. No. Or what, what's no. more the timestamp for? The timestamp is so that you're in sync with what's playing. So they, sh- oh. so I'm voiceovering in English, ah. and it's usually like in Got Japanese uh-huh. or Polish. Gotcha. Yes, yes, or yes, French. Yes. You're dub. You're doing the dubs the dubbing, for those dubbing, listening dubbing. at home. Dubs. Yeah. Yes. Okay. My bad. Yeah. Incredible. Do you like anime yourself? Are you into it? No. I grew up on it, trying to get back into it, so I'm eh. thirsting for research on that too. So Any I mean, it's like it? it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, voice acting in general is awesome. Whether it's mm-hmm. anime, whether it's Garfield, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, superhero stuff, that's awesome. Like, I like Garfield. M- my dream is to you know play a superhero, <laughs> like being like a superhero movie, like somehow be a villain or a side character, something. But now mm-hmm. realizing like if I could do voice acting, even cooler. Like you, that you could do a bunch of people. Like literally. Ma- um, sp- we we're talking about Star Wars before we began. Mark Hamill, um, which is Luke Skywalker, uh, he is the most legendary voice for the Joker. Yeah, so, mm. anyways, here in the air cast, <laughs> the people, the streets, the world, everybody wants to know, the Air Force, my fan base, and you listening at home, we start with the important questions, so everybody wants to know, is uh, Christy, well, what does V stand for in Christy V? Um, so, V is, I took it from my mom's uh, maiden name, okay. her, which is Velez. Velez, with a Z at the end? Yep. Awesome, yep. okay, shout out yep. mom. Shout out, mom. That's my little Colombian side, you know? Cool. Um, but yeah, because my, my last name is Abru. That's the Cuban side? Yep. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So okay. I was like, wow, that's really not an artist name. 
and like everybody mispronounces it and it's just Oh, so V is, is cool. <laughs> they say like a industry. Brit. Yeah, it's like short, sweet, like catchy to nice. me, I thought. And is Christy short for anything? It's and my it's government name. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> well, this is... We're going to have to bleep everything, man. We're, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll bleep it if it's, you want. I love no, editing. No, it's, it's one time. One time is good. It's okay. I mean, it's one time here, but this is going to go viral, millions of views. <laughs> People are going to clip it all over TikTok. Like, we can't control that. No, nah, I don't care. If don't you care. told me to blo- block it, we'll block it. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a joke that I do. Everyone's like, my, it's like my mom screaming at me. So I'm like... So, like some people don't like to be called by their real name like yeah I, I hear that I like oh mm-hmm. don't call me by my real name it reminds me of so and so my mom so instead of saying real name I say government name government yeah that's, that's my street yeah that's what the streets say now don't put my government out there <laughs> yeah that's kind of funny um my my name was always weird my real name's Urbano I got it from my dad I'm the third of my name so but he had a nickname so I kind of like had a built in nick- nickname that I kind of mm-hmm. just gave to people because it was easier for people because people always struggled with it mm-hmm. and I didn't care to make the effort to like educate people or tell people how to do it mm-hmm. or how to pronounce it and now that i'm older i just introduce my people myself as Because everybody calls my dad ub so it's like i hate saying yeah. I'm because now it's little ub and it's like no my name's urbano yeah. official air is my artist name air ideally but cualquier cosa but I, the ub thing's just more my dad but when i was younger i stuck with that but now mm-hmm. i'm just introducing the urbano like if it's not on the music table you don't already know who i am I'm urbano because urbano but that's dope though yeah, it's just being uh, kind of like the kids say, standing on business. And like, you gotta, you know, I'm standing on my name and it's, I'm proud of it. It's super unique. Yeah. And it's like, I know some, I've seen other Urbanos now after <laughs> almost being 30 years alive on this world, but oh, um, not too many. And I haven't really mm-hmm. met them in real life, I think, yet. Um, so, you're a teacher. I was a teacher, yeah. Were a teacher. What yeah. inspired you to get into teaching? Thank um, you for your service, by the way. That's I feel like oh, that's yes. very important that people say that. It's, um, I'm in sales, and even before I was in sales, like, I, I just, it's, you're shaping the minds of the future, and it's damn near, like, getting into a hospital, and, like, mm-hmm. you have to deal with crazy things. You, children are insane, you know? Yep. Children are psychopathic. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, being in the hospital and dealing with people dying and having to tell families, hey, he didn't make it. Like, that's crazy to be like, hey, I'm here to help people, but I'm also numb to that, those tough conversations, like, yeah. and I feel like teaching's the same thing, just, like, going in the military. Like, that's why whenever I meet teachers, like, thank you for your service. Like, that's incredible. What inspired yeah. you or well, motivated thank you, for you that. What, to get in there? Um, so I started teaching um, when I was, like, in high school. I would do, like, community service hours because I was part of a, um, like, I was in a studio and I was performing arts. And so I was very, very involved. Um, so I started teaching, like, in summer camp. Like, they'll be like, oh, you know, Christy, do you want to just be a counselor? And wow. I was like, yeah, for free. And how old are the kids you're, you're counseling, I guess? We're not counseling, but um, being a counselor for they were like all ages from like two years old to like 10 okay you know i would try to stick to the little ones because Easier. i was little i was like yes. 16 17 right <laughs> so i started there and then after high school i jumped i was like oh yeah i want to be a teacher because i didn't know what else to do with my life i was like i know i want to perform but i didn't know like i wanted to be like an artist or whatever so um i got into teaching and then they threw me into like an autistic class where I had, like, they just threw me in. Like, I had zero experience, like, with, like, school, school. Threw me into my own class, and then I just fell in love. Like, I love kids, number one. So, I just, I guess that's my, like, other passion, other than, like, music and stuff. Children. So, yeah. uh, low-key, like, there's, or high-key, I guess, there's definitely multiple paths where you could connect the two, help people with mm-hmm. music once you're on, mm-hmm. and the, already on, but once you get more, like, in a worldwide, you know, level, and people, that you have more of a platform, you could already do it now. Low-key, yeah. it gets you to that worldwide platform. That's, yeah. like, huge. Like, no, like that's super unique. And um, there's so, by, so many people getting to music nowadays. It's beautiful. As artists, you know, you always hear the complaint of, oh, there's too many people doing it, but it's, like, it's part of the game, you know? It's, it's at the end of the day it's just like AI mm-hmm. bust your ass just stop being half ass with your craft and go hard and be passionate AI can be passionate AI can do that all the <laughs> people that are just half assing it and just buying equipment and doing it they can't do what you do and you gotta yeah. believe in yourself to, to, to that extent yeah. Um. so yeah that, that's really cool I wanted to touch on, on the um, teaching and I do want to ask this how can we improve the educational system or how, how can the world improve the edu- educational system because I think that's crazy that it's so messed <sighs> up at least here in America like there's other countries that it's it's so completely different and like uh, being a teacher you know out, it's it's outside of being college professors like being a, a grade school teacher is, it's mm-hmm. it's it's a 
much more respected profession in other countries and much higher paid yeah. and way better benefits and it's it's just madness to me that we just you know we're gonna bleep that shit on you know our teachers mm -hmm. unfortunately so mm -hmm. how do you think we could improve it you know not, don't have to you know get too i deep, mean i mean you said it the first thing has to be like respect like let's throw go, like back to, back in the day when a teacher would say hey your kid did this did the kid say well what did you do to make my kid do that like nowadays it's like that before it was like <laughs> wow like you get smacked like you should listen to your teacher like you know what i mean that's your teacher there was like more respect for the teacher now it's like it's too delicate it's too like sensitive all the parents are like protecting the kids at all costs or whatever and then the teachers are kind of like we're with your kid for eight out of you know 24 hours Damn like we're no, with your kid more no you you know the kids more than them That's yeah crazy. we know your kid like his true self yeah you know what i mean when his or her true self with the parental supervision yeah so like I don't know. The one is respect. The teachers need more respect and they need to be paid better because that's a big reason why like I left teaching. Cuz I was like I love it. I mean obviously my dream is to be a, an artist, but I would have stayed teaching if they paid more and I was making great money like it was just like I love it. It right. was fun. I mean, I do voiceover so I would always do little voices like to get the kid to come do like math. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Can you I do was a just voice like voice right quick. Oh god, I don't know. I'll just be like, like, hey, come here, and then they'll be like, oh, come on. I'll be like, oh man, like, why are you gonna do that? Like, you know, and I make them laugh, and then they're like, ah, 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 ah and then they forget, and then That's they awesome. come. You know, that's like, awesome. I love that. That's really cool. stupid. Sh yeah. That's powerful, and like I said, thank you for your service. Um, so would you ever get back into it? Like, but some like maybe musically, would you be open to that? Like showing people how to better their stage presence better their artistry you know yeah maybe. yeah i mean i still kind of do it um i'm working with a company it's called jam with jamie and uh jam with jamie so basically um we go in and we're like the entertainment of your party um we don't dress up as characters or anything thank god um but we go in we do like a whole 45 minute set of like wheels on the bus <laughs> abc's nice. A little shake it off taylor swift okay so you mix it up with like yeah there's like pop stuff. there's pop songs there's like things and then we have like pom-poms we have like a parachute we have bubbles wow. you know we have like a whole storyline of like let's go under the sea and then we like put the bubbles and it's like the seaweed is always greener you're a performer else is that's yeah. awesome so that's kind of like my piece of like i'm still with kids you know what i mean which i love i love doing that job I go in for a party, an hour, I'm gone. Like, you know? Wow. I, I do that on the weekends, so. On the weekends? Yeah. Okay. Well, still, you know, at least you're making time to do I it. That's awesome. On the weekends. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Okay, so how long have you, well, yeah, let's start with how long you've been performing, because you're a triple threat. Sing, mm -hmm. dance, perform. There's another one. Model. Model, quadruple threat. Mm -hmm. Voice act. Voice act. Regular act, like real life act too. Yeah. I've been in plays. Six tuple? How would you say six? Just... Oh my Oof. god! <laughs> it's the lightning striking down. It's like yes, get it right. Yeah, yeah. Six tuple. She's a six tuple threat. <laughs> six tuple threat. Um. So when did you start performing, and what was first, dancing, singing? What came first, naturally, or, or just like that you, I guess, actually performed? Yeah, said. I started dancing at three. Wow. And then, ballet? What specifically? Yeah, like little kid sh Like okay. ballet. You know? But like actually like in classes? Or yeah, you yeah, like yeah. A, Okay, mm -hmm, ballet mm -hmm. classes at three years old. Incredible. That's really young and that's mm -hmm, really impressive. Mm -hmm. So you start ballet with ballet and what comes after that? So I think my first show was at like five. So like my first real show. This is a recital? It's yeah. No, that's what it's called, right? A yeah, recital. recitals. Incredible. Because um, you're part of like a, stu a dance studio. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, I started singing. I, I auditioned for, like, the voice group. The I was on, like, all the teams. Like, my life was dance, you know? All connected to the same dance studio that you were ballet at? Yeah, so nice. it was called Roxy Performing Arts Center. I'll drop them right here. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, work the camera. <laughs> That's what we're doing. And, um, yeah, they did everything. Dance, acting, uh, musical theater... They put on their own productions of musicals. It was crazy. I've been in like 13 musicals. Wow. What was yeah. the first one? 
Susical. Susical the musical. Susical the <laughs> musical. That's bars. Cut the fr funk flex. That's called mother <laughs> bars, Nick. Anyways, what is Susical the musical about? It's all Dr. Seuss. Um, and it has like all the characters and they go through the storyline of like the Who's and and like saving Whoville. Wow. And, yeah, so Shout I was like a, <laughs> I was a, we know you are. <laughs> I was a bird girl, and then I was also um like what's a bird sour. girl like you're a girl that's a bird. Like they were just like the little, I thought that they were the little hoes because they were always chasing after like the. They were like the little booties. I swear, they had like little those little cat eye glasses, little tight like thing with like. I crazy can find hair. a picture of it online. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna drop it right here. Yeah, it's on. on. It's on Broadway. Like it's a real show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they were like super flirty and like oh oh my god like you know the cartoons back in the day like when all the, the you're a natural like, born act ac <laughs> actress you're a natural born actress you had you're like what's my direction they're booties okay <laughs> i love it i it's always got casted as like the little hosky well i've got sass hey listen uh, uh, margot robbie's one of the rawest you know actresses in the game right now you know mm -hmm. one of her initial roles are like that you know wolf of wash one of the sexiest yeah. booty role of all time and it's like you know i mean I, I don't mind it it's like i see that meme like every day yeah i mean I, you have to be true to yourself right this is <laughs> this is who i is <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I mean, I do say that, you know, we're, we're all booties and putos for the right person, you know, like, it's I like... You didn't mean it like that. But I, it's like, okay, well, how'd you mean it? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to help you out here. <laughs> now you're setting me up. <laughs> I didn't mean that I'm a booties, like, in I real life. I just either, mean yeah, that, like, just, I'm, like, flirty but, and, like, sexy, I mean, kind of, you know, like, in real it's life. So. Oh, it's natural, yes, you it, have. It comes, the sex appeal comes, comes a little natural. natural. Oh, my God. Yeah, Making me nervous. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It comes natural. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I I got it natural too. You know, I'm oh. kidding. I'm kidding. It's <laughs> I can see it. When, when people fix their posture around me, it's like I feel like they're telling me they're projecting. They're like, I know, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I gotta fix it low key, but uh, we're working on it. This is like episode. Well, we'll drop this early, but this is the twentieth time I've recorded, maybe like the fourth woman, though. So right, fourth. Doesn't matter. That's good. <laughs> Well, anyways, so <laughs> what was the first time you ever recorded an actual song, original? Two years ago, I want to say. Wow. When I decided that I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. You, mm -hmm. Before the podcast started, you acted like two years ago was a long time ago. It's like right there. You just started. It's amazing. I know. It feels like a long time, but it really isn't. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. And also, like, I feel like when I started... um being like okay i'm gonna be an artist i was in a completely different space in my life and i feel like th i went through it's been growth so i'm i'm like grateful you for evolved. that but yes i've totally evolved but it took me like those two years to actually be like the person i am now and i'm like okay this i know exactly who i am this is what i want this is the, the direction i want my music to go in you know because i was just lost completely lost lost in life you mean or with music in general like creating music the process of how it comes um both both like i feel like i had a lot of insecurities um i had gone through like a really bad breakup um i was like shifting in between like friends and like, all this is happening before you start recording so this is like all the catharsis to you <laughs> making the song that's awesome that's powerful it's for the movie that's yeah. like, you know, that's how the movie kind of starts is you going through all that stuff and you're like, I can't stand this. Mm -hmm. You know, just mm -hmm. being frustrated and venting, using it as therapy. That's how I feel about music. Like, yeah. I do so many other things, but I'd be naive to think music's going to be what overall pays the bills and gets mo my family members' houses and finances, all that. It, it could be a part of it, yeah. but it can't be the only thing. Music, you know, fortunately, the way we're, we're paid is not the best. And right. that's why it's not just a podcast, but it's, it's everything. Like, I'm multifaceted and even the most successful artists, they're doing other things. Yeah. Which is why about, I do yeah. a million things. People ask me, what do you do? And I'm like, what don't I do? Sit down. <laughs> like, Jill of all let trades. me, let me like list it for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot. I do brand ambassador work, um, which is cool because it gets me in the room mm -hmm. to like crazy parties with crazy executive producers. Like I've been in some crazy, crazy events that I was like, I'm never going to be able to be in this room again. If not for the, if the, not the, for the being doors that were open because of, well, yeah. Yes, but I also say no because 
that brand chose you to be an ambassador. So mm -hmm. it's you, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you got yourself there and there'll yeah. be other brands and other doors that you'll go through because those people see the same thing that we all yeah. universally see in Chris TV. Mm -hmm. Same thing they see at home. So, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, just to kind of like um, because I, I think it's natural for us to all deal with insecurities and it's just part of life and growth and figuring it out. And as you get yep. older, you grow other insecurities and you're like damn i gotta get better at this i gotta get better at that or i used to be this or you know whatever yeah. it may be but it, it's part of evolving like uh i've said it multiple times on the podcast already we're like pokemon i don't know if you're familiar but you evolve you get to like the next step and it's just yeah. a constant process you know yeah. it's, it's it's insanity to be stuck like the same way so mm -hmm. um as an artist how do you think is it's do you want to implement like more like is it harder to do choreography like with the music you think like as far as like because you did more than ballet you, yeah so yeah how, is that like i feel like that's challenging as hell for me as a guy that goes to the gym and things like that and i see mm -hmm. you break it down a little bit i'm like is there like a natural like do you see yourself doing like more choreography like more closer to like ballet and things like having like ballerinas behind you or like more like hip-hop style background so dancers? so um while dance while performing i do i do like i mean well on stage now um I dance, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, in... It's already, wow. like, so in me yeah. that um, I, I already do it. But, like, choreography, like, I do want to eventually, like, you know, perform and have dancers behind me. And, yeah. and like, I could keep up. I just got to get back into class, like, ASAP. Yourself, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, because dance has evolved so much from when I was dancing, like, a couple years ago that, yeah. I need to get back into class. Kind of like the, I think Jimmy Fallon has like the evolution of dance where they do all the different dances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is constantly changing, but uh -huh. um, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. that's, I think that's a huge talent yeah. you have. You should definitely uh, utilize it and uh, take advantage of it. Cause yeah, for sure. And uh, change is important in life. So let me uh, see what else we got here. Um, my left, this way. How do you embrace change? And um, what's a good tip that you would have for embracing change? Because that's like one of the only concepts we have in life. Death, taxes, Ooh. and change. What's a good way to embrace change, you think? For embrace those listening at change. Home? What would you tell Chris TV three, four years ago before the breakup and all that stuff happened and before you started recording? What would be like a, a good tip you'd give her as far as, you know, the change that's about to come and constantly coming? Things are changing, you know, yeah. this moment. Um, hmm. I would say just like do it. You just got to do it. Thank you. Yeah, literally, because I'm I'm such a creature of like fear. I live in fear and I feel like and, and I live uncomfortable, which is why I've been able to do so much, because before I would hold back and like be like, oh, no, I, I can't do it. Like self-doubt. And like just because I was scared. What and are you now in fear of? what are you scared of? Just I just cared about what every single person thought. Um, I, I like seeked validation from everybody, men, relationships, like friendships, like it was everything. Like I would have an idea and I'll be like, oh, wait, but what do you think? And then if their idea was different than mine, I'll be like, oh, wait, but OK, so maybe I should do what you said. And it was it was constantly like that, which is why now I'm just so sure that I'm like, I don't care what you say or you say, like, I'm going to do what I want. So I just like I need to just leap. And that's like what I've gotten in the habit of doing. Just leap. Seek because, yeah. yeah, just be uncomfortable. Be, we grow out of our comfort zone. Too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I struggle with that all the time, too. Uh, yeah. Like I, I set up these questions, but the truth is a, a lot of my favorite podcasts in retrospect have been the ones where we kind of just flow and there's no direction. But like mm -hmm. the cool thing about this podcast is I have the pleasure of meeting people for the first time and getting to record you know, our first interaction, which is kind of what we're doing here. So yeah. I have all of these things that I kind of want to get to. So, but that comes from a place of comfort, a of comfort and not mm -hmm. wanting to know where to steer the conversation. But, um, that's, that's just a good metaphor for life in general. And I'm really glad you, you said that. That's, that's awesome. And, uh, and like another one is like, um, don't expect everything to go your way. Like no. I'm a, I'm Virgo in the sense of like, I'm very OCD. Um, I'm just very like, I, I do my plan and then like I would freak out if it wasn't going exactly the way I planned it and like no but it's supposed to do this it's supposed to go this way so now I'm just like <sighs> like life goes like this and like yep. this and you know so like 
if something doesn't go your way it happened the other day there was a show um i was performing at and the lead of the like the show the guy that i was with things were not going his way the sound system was off like he couldn't perform to his full ability and what and then like i kind of jumped in and i was like well what are we gonna do to save the day you know what i mean the like almost gone just go just go 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 stop thinking about it just do what your gut tells you to do follow your gut 100 percent. your gut's always right it's powerful always your gut instinct and just going forth with what you think is right yeah yeah that's that's crazy yeah it's it's you hear it a million times but it'll just you sometimes but you have to put it into practice like i've put it into practice so much that now it's like easy for me to do it there's no choice yeah it's it's, it's mm-hmm. comes much more natural that's that's awesome i i uh, envy that and i i you know work on that tr- like to say daily yeah but uh i like i look for so many escapes and uh speaking of escapes what's a sweet escape <laughs> you're just the sweetest guy streaming everywhere <laughs> but can you define that what would be a sweet escape to you because that record is powerful but like you know there's a lot of sweet escapes a like. sweet escape it's like um anything that makes you feel good um and that you're able to like just like check out for a moment of like this life that you're living that's kind of like the sweet escape idea kind of like this um, podcast oh yeah yeah <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll stick with the people at home, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, that's pretty much what a sweet escape is. Like, anywhere that it's, like, pleasant for you. It's awesome. Escapism. And uh, it can't be, like, alcohol or drugs or stuff like that. Like, it's, like, a real, nice, genuine, peaceful. Those would be sour escapes. When it's alcohol or drugs and things like that. That's a sour <laughs> escape. Yeah. A sweet escape would be more, like when it's natural when it's yeah like being high off life That's high off life working out one of the best feelings in the world one of the best feelings is when you do mm-hmm. not want to go to the gym you make every excuse whatsoever and yeah. then you still go and then after that, that workout at the end when you're walking on you're like damn i fucking did that shit uh-huh That's and you crazy. have like the best workout ever that was me yesterday yeah it's it's powerful That's that was me yesterday one of the best highs ever mm-hmm. yeah and speaking of highs where are the aliens they're right here man <laughs> okay, the other aliens. <laughs> Sweet escape of an answer, but <laughs> <laughs> wait, like real aliens? Yeah, well, we're apparently the real aliens, according to you. But, but I yeah, think I think that too. I'm like an alien, and how, I know how that sounds. I know how it sounds. I sound like a sound? crazy. I sound really psycho. The thing is, I really truly believe that I was abducted. Maybe I'm not an alien, but who knows? Maybe they switched me out. Where were you born? <laughs> Why did you say abducted? Do you know where you were born? Yeah. It was, okay, maybe like six, seven years ago, I was leaving my boyfriend at the Times. Um, I think I talked about this. The other one. Um, I was leaving my boyfriend at the Times Fuego talk. I house. Know. I don't think you talked about it, though. I, I just listened to that, that episode. The today. Oh, the first oh, one. Oh, the lost episode. The lost one. It's on my is, Patreon. You guys perfect. pay for it. Which maybe it is, maybe it's not <laughs> <laughs> the surprise. Who knows? Pay for the Patreon. Find out. Um. So yeah, I was leaving his house. It was like three a.m. Um. I was driving. I was sober. Sober. Okay. I wasn't drunk. Everybody's like, "Oh yeah, but you were fucked up." No. You disclose that from the you, you preface the story. Okay. Yeah, so I was happened? sober. You're guys. driving late night, three a.m. after se- being spending the evening with your boyfriend. Yeah. So okay. he lives in Bird Road. So it's like a what, fifteen minute drive to Kendall. Or driving Mm -hmm. and then i was really into like aliens at the time and apparently if you see like three stars aligned in a line and then if they move like straight up and down three okay aliens it's it's a spaceship (laughs) i i've heard that yeah it's a spaceship like ufos or or whatever yeah Yeah, so i saw that in the sky rowdy so i was like oh my god it's aliens i was like yes i got to see some shit and then i get to like the corner of my house and then i see this airplane it was a it was like an airplane literally this way not how airplanes fly okay it was going right vertical yeah, yeah right above a house in the corner of my house and it had two big round balls of light in the corners and then i just feel like i was frozen in time mm-hmm. Shout out to the Virgos. No Gotti in the house. Guy Virgos are not the same, though. Come on. The what? 
Guy Virgos are not the same. Let's talk about the Zodiacs because my uh, Soul, Scor- Soul Scorpio streaming everywhere now. My last album. But I think it's all myth. I think it's all Illuminati controlling us. I think that there's Scorpios that act like Virgos. There's Virgos that act like Tauruses. There's Tauruses that act like... What, what, sign are, what sign are you? Oh, you're Scorpio. What's your Taurus? There's Tauruses that act like, you know, it's all it's all mixed match. Like, you know, you could tell somebody I'm whatever. And they're like, yeah, you're so whatever. And then you could just plot twist. I'm actually not that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I really don't know shit about it. Yeah, we were just talking about reincarnation. And I just found out that's, uh it's a belief. And some people do truly believe that you'll be reincarnated every single zodiac sign over and over and over and over and i prompted the idea was like what if you're just a scorpio 12 times over and over and over you're like why can't i change but uh, apparently that's not how that why can't i change (laughs) why am i just the same you're stuck in the scorpio that's horrible actually yeah if aliens were watching this they'd be like yo this is hilarious aliens listening yeah but you want to hear something crazy and i didn't even blink an eye because whatever as i'm saying the story my headphones started going all weird they're listening. They're listening. Or we just need better uh, sound equipment. <laughs> no, it's great. I think it's the aliens, though, to be honest. You never know, man. Whatever. I think, w- you think w- you don't think we'll find out in our lifetime? You don't think we'll have, like, some Men in Black situation in our lifetime? I other? think so. Yeah. And it's getting real close to because a lot of weird shit is happening. And yeah, we got a good 30, 40 years if we're lucky to figure, to figure it out. But um, I just hope I'm, like, old enough to, like, run. Why run? I think they'll down. be nice. I think they'll be cool. First off, if they're already out here, like we're assuming, and we think that means they're already better than us. They're already more sophisticated, and they're yeah. watching us. They're hidden. That means they're well. They're s- hidden. That's why I'm like, holy shit! What if I'm one? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If they were malicious, they would have already done malicious shit to us already. I feel like and that's true. Know. But they're studying us <coughs> to do malicious shit. That's the idea. Not to do malicious shit, but like to take over. That's malicious shit. I would think. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe we need some taking over. But I, 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 I do subscribe to the belief that I think uh, we're so divided as humanity. That would be one thing that makes maybe makes us. Well, you know, that's another theory of mine. Like we're getting more divided and more divided. We did. I think it's for it's for yeah. a reason. Religion, politics, sports. I think um, it's 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 for ideas. a reason. Like ultimately, like shit's gonna go down, and we're not gonna be united. So this, which is what they want. You're into movies. That's a silly question. Have you seen the movie District Nine? I think so. It's a movie about aliens, and the, and it's it's a good metaphor for like or analogy for for I guess racism because the aliens are there and they they group them up in like these camps and like they don't let them interact with like you know the rest of society and like one of the main characters is like a human that turns into an alien and he goes through the whole shit like his wife divorces him like crazy it's it's, it's oh. madness but I, I do think of that movie it. a lot and it's it's like I do feel like humans were so mean to everything. Look how yeah. we treat our own world. Look how we treat animals. Look how we treat, you know, zoos are terrible. Like, I love Busch Gardens. I have annual pass for the rides. But every time I see the animals, I'm like, free them, boys. Like, you know, it's, I hate I that. Know, I hate what it's we do to uh, We're the only living thing on this planet that affects the planet for worse. You know, it's yeah. a lot of other, no, nothing else does that. You know, everybody goes, yeah. decomposes, but we, nuclear bombs, cut down trees. Like, it's all good. It's sad. Yeah. It's sad. But that's why we got to use our platforms to... Do better. Mm-hmm. Do better. Apex in the house. Just said that. Facts. Because if not, we're just here and, you know, wilding out. And you've done a lot of different genres. You've done reggae. Reggae. Searching, right? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. House music. A little bit of house music, yeah. Country, tremendo record. Chalk, chalk outlines. Chalk outlines. Yes. Crazy chalk record. outlines. Shout out to Carlos. Yeah. yeah. OG White Boy in the house. He got uncomfortable hearing the song because it made him sad, so... You know, not to put my will, boy out there, but it's it's a powerful record. Yeah, I will. I told s- him that I prefaced it like that. It's a powerful record. She got listen to it. Thank you. So. Um, it's not it's not an original. It's a cover. Okay. Do yeah. you know by who? Uh, Chinchilla and somebody else. Um, but we did our own rend- rendition of it. So he played it live. Um, you know, we added a whole section to it. So we Incredible. really we really tried to make it our own, but it's a very powerful song. You did the first time I've ever heard Powerful. that record in any iteration, so that's that's yeah. awesome. Shout yeah. out to Chinchilla, but also shout out Carlos. Thank uh, you. That's cool, and that was you started doing music two years ago. Is that like one of them your more recent records? You just yes. did that in the last. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, awesome. And then so I think it was like two months ago. 
two, three months. And what's the plan as far as artistry? Do you have uh, just dropping singles for now? Do you have an idea to maybe drop an album eventually? Like, how does that work for now? What's your mindset as far as that goes? So, ultimate goal for this year is drop an EP. Maybe, like, five, five, six songs. So, I'm building the catalog for that. But I do think that I'm going to drop, like, a summer, a summer banger. Um, nice. All Spanish. Cool. Yeah, so I'm working on, like, the video. So, we're trying to do, like, a like full out you know video do you have an idea it. for the project name the ep name and the record the spanish record ep name i'm thinking i don't know the name but i i think i'm doing like like how i said before like i went through a whole um evolution through my life Catharsis. yeah through like you know so i'm working on the name but okay definitely it's like what i've been through to get to this point that i'm at now so i think that's going to be like the theme of mm. the whole of the whole EP change evolving yep like a phoenix from the ashes rising mm-hmm. powerful that's awesome that Latin, everybody could resonate to that cause right it's one of the three things that are guaranteed in this life taxes death mm-hmm. and change yeah yeah that's that's powerful and um, the Spanish record that you have it's all completely Spanish cause like you have records or you're kind of doing a little bit of board, uh, mm-hmm. both like olvida yeah olvidar olvidar <laughs> to, remember <laughs> to forget yeah. Um, <laughs> um, for so all you non-Spanish people, th- this whole record now, this next one's gonna be all 100% Spanish. No, no English vibes at all. Yeah. No Spanglish. Yeah, That's I'm cool. definitely. I'm trying to do more Spanish because I feel like it's a smart way for me to go. Yeah. Especially because I'm Hispanic. Is that your first language? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I mean, I speak it very like. Ratata. Ratata. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, like, yo me defiendo, but at yeah. the same time, I feel I'm the like, same way. Um, I'm the same way uh, yeah. I want to do a Spanish, uh, uh, you know, guest where we were just speaking the whole time in Spanish. I was telling my dad the other day, and he looked at me like, <laughs> no, you're not. You got to get a lot better, son. And it's like, do you speak how Spanish like that? You know, the same way. The same way you just described it is how I speak I feel. Spanglish. I, I've, I've learned to accept it. Yeah, oh, I mean, Christy, Christy speaks a lot better Spanish than you do. Yeah, my dad's face well, right di- now was like. Ve, habla algo en español. Yeah, no, we're not. Okay. De- diga algo en español. We'll be right back. <laughs> I, 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 I have no segment. Bueno, este es mi podcast, so yo puedo hacer español, pero estoy volado en este momento. Yo quiero enfocar en usted. Y si yo empiezo a hacer esto, entonces el podcast se, se pone a hacer un. Una mierda. No, una mierda. Oh. Oh, bueno, una mierda, pero. Okay. Una porquería. <laughs> porquería. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, we're back. <laughs> that was good. We're going to have the mono right there with that whole bit. We're going <laughs> to have to put English translations. That's awesome. But yeah, that's my goal. Maybe I could do like a, a, a Spanish podcast with my grandma. And it's just, she's my co host, and we'll just be talking. Hey, hey, no puede ser esto. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I could just play my grandma. I'll just go back and forth. And Shit, get my grandma too. It'll be a grandma cast. My grandma loves to talk. What a oh Sita, man. God, She's home. She's home That's alone all the grandmas. All the time. That's the thing. All the guests I have on here, if, you know, anybody who's you know blessed enough to still have their grandmas on, mm-hmm. they'll, uh, they'll come on. <laughs> yeah. You got to be you gotta be weary of that. Uh, I have, I, I'm a fan of podcasts, of course. <laughs> Shout out to Rogan the Goat. He was having this fight yes. with Aljamain Sterling on one time. And Aljamain Sterling, he's a young guy. He's like, I think he's younger than me, and I'm 29. And he's going off about his parents and his grandparents, and he's in this super passionate story. And he goes, yeah, what are your grandparents like? And Joe Rogan's blasted, and he goes, well, I'm 50 years old. My grandparents are dead. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so ever since I saw that, I was like, wow, you got to be, you got to, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, the nice. You, you got to be, you know, you got to understand. You got to be respectful because it's it's a blessing. You know, my, I lost one grandparent I never met. Uh, mm-hmm. my, from my mom's side and then my, my dad's parents you know I had them for uh, my childhood and then once yeah. I hit like high school I started to lose them and you know I have clear memories but of course I wish they were here and my grandma now she's the only one I got and my best friend my dog like you know yeah. I, 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 I'd argue that you know I, I damn near spent more time with her than my parents almost you know mm-hmm. she's in and out you know she's Never Trump, been out of my Trump, life. Trump. <laughs> yeah, she she loves Trump and but she, whatever. She's just Amanda. She's she loves everything. She's shout out to my grandma. Oh, <laughs> shout out grandmas. Yeah, shout out grandmas. Hi, Nana. Worldwide. Um, do, do you want to have kids at some point in life? I do want to have kids. I hopefully love kids. Be a grandma. You know? What? Hopefully, be a grandma at some point. Oh, I thought you said hopefully be your grandma. I'm like, what? Hopefully, be your gr- well. I. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Anyways. Yes, yes. The answer is yes. yes. I do want kids. I want at least two. Two. I want a boy. 
Yeah, two is awesome. Do yeah. not give me two girls, please, Lord. I just have three. I can't. I can't. Do you have any uh, predetermined names that you would like? Ugh. I used to. What? Like what when are I they? what changed? Well, I was in like my early twenties, and like you know, you plan out. Well, actually, no. In high school, you're like, I want to get married. Like. Graduate high school. I want to get married by 22, and then um, have kids by 25, and then by 28, like my kids will be cute. And like, no, that 25 was a disaster. Disaster. 28, even more disaster. 29, I got it together, and now 30, 31, like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's hilarious. The best I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, of course. You, you, I, I think that's the natural development of life. We're supposed to continue. Like, the whole thing of our prime is, like, you're going to continue mm -hmm. getting to your prime. And even if athletically and physically you decline, mentally you get better and you realize what works for you, what makes you happy. And you don't got to go through the tribulations and the, you know, the failures and the errors of life and the downfalls of, damn, that doesn't work for me. That's not what I like. Once you're older, you're quick to it because you know yourself, hopefully. If, if, yeah, you know, if you well, hopefully. Do it the right way, yeah. Oh, my God. Can imagine people out there listening to this right now, a 56 year old, like, fuck, I gotta figure it out. But that's kind of, I think we all feel like we gotta figure it out. A little late, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay, so back on the kids thing, like, it is a scary topic. Like, I talk about it with my mom a lot because she's ready to be a grandma, obviously. She's like, I'm gonna have had grandchildren, you know what I mean? But, like, at the same time, like, I'm not where I wanna be career wise. Right. Um, and I just, like, I wanna be a present mother. Like, yeah. I don't, and then the, my mom's like, you could take her on tour. I'm like, uh, nah, first of all, I'm not, not J-Lo. Nah, and, and it's not healthy for the kid. Like, what yeah. kind of childhood is a kid going to have on a freaking bus? Like, yeah. traveling, like, how boring for them. You know what I mean? So, that's another thing that I'm thinking about. I'm like, man, I'm hitting 32 this year. I'm like, there's only really, like, three more years for me to have kids. Because if not, I'm going to be, like, a 40-year-old mom. What is that? old i mean old i don't know and then also since i was a teacher sorry i'm going into like no this is your podcast this, this is what i think about all the time <laughs> what is um, it? Don't say it. <laughs> like i think about it and i'm like the way that this world is set up right now scary it's very scary to have a child they but, are very subject to basically everything isn't but it's uncomfortable it's like we were talking about earlier you have to seek the discomfort and and maybe it's always going to be scary to have a kid maybe it's well, that's always true. That's you true. know maybe if this if you were born 10 years prior and you would have been having this oh. thought 10 years you would have been like the world's crazy <laughs> go outside you know? see you later yeah. maybe, i don't know i just feel like there's always madness going on and you know it's yeah. just, especially nowadays with these phones and um, another thing I wanted to ask you about, but it, it, that's kind of, sorry, that's funny, it's a full circle moment. Before oh, no. the podcast started, when she first walked in, she stepped on me, and now my accident, on me. my big foot stepped on her. <laughs> I'm sorry. My kicks. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, so, Jesus, I just got off trap. <laughs> Woof. Anyways, so, um, are friends and fans the same thing? Absolutely fucking not. Okay. Like, Cause, absolutely not. Okay, because as artists, we go through, um, at least I, I did, and I feel like a lot of people do too, and if I go talk episode of her streaming now, go check it out. Um, <laughs> you guys kind of got into that, and it, it's hurtful when friends don't share your stuff or friends mm -hmm. view your stories and don't like or comment. And it's sad, but, like, I'm already at a point in my life where that's always happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even blame them no more because it's like, they're not supposed to be my fans. They're my friends, and exactly. they're there for that. And it's like, I have millions of other friends to get, and I got to find them. Yep. And those are people that are, are in love with my music. And it's like, it's 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 a tough it's a tough sw pill to swallow. But it's like in an ideal world, yeah, everybody supports you. And man, maybe when you're blown up, they, they start knowing your words, your songs word for word. Or maybe I always knew your stuff. But who knows? Th that's not our choice. And that's not our battle to fight. Mm -hmm. You know, We got to just continue. The show must go on, like you yeah. mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about that now? Because well, when did you guys record that last episode of Fuego Talk? Was it this year, 2024? Oof. Last year. No, that was, yeah. So you've had some year. growth and development since last year. So what's right your opinion on that now? Um. So I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I don't expect anything from you guys. Because at first it was like, you would reach out to like your closest people. Like, hey, like, why aren't you sharing my song? Like, Oh, I just dropped this. Like, why aren't you showing support? Like, and then it would really like affect me. 
So I just got to realize, and also family, like the family and friends are so close to you that they don't see the big, like the big picture. They yeah. just see like what they're used to. It, it just might not be for them either, you know. Like you could give me the rawest, juiciest peach in the world, but yeah, I don't like true. peaches. I've never liked peaches, so it's yeah. like, you know. Yeah. As an artist, I'm being like, I, I feel like it's kind of like self accountability. Like, okay, maybe I just haven't made this song that they'll like yet. And mm-hmm. that's kind of where like the a bunch of freestyle project came from. Now there's a bunch of rock coming soon. You know, and I'm gonna create. I gotta figure out a content that they'll be like, damn, that's actually good. Because mm-hmm. I'm searching for that. I'm earning for them. Want my cousins, my family members to be like, wow, that's that's the song. You know, because music's made me cry. Music's done that, and that's my goal. Yeah. So I, we have records that powerful. Records that have that take people out of depressions and take people out of you know dark places and just take people first to different parts of their life you know and mm-hmm. help escape because music does that for me and it's done that for me so many times and it continues to continues to do that for me so yeah. i think that's what I, I would you know like what i'm striving for as an artist like what i would determine is success so yeah it kind of goes to friends you know you kind of mm-hmm. expect them all to support because there's millions of other friends you're going to meet it's one of the most beautiful things yeah. of life all the relationships you haven't yet begun to have all the people you haven't yet met all the fans you haven't yet, you know, inspired and reached out to and blessed with their ears. Um, so that's really cool. I'm, I'm really yeah. glad you have that. You kind of had that growth within just a year mm-hmm. since you did Thank Fuego you. Talk. Thank oh, no, you. For the second time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, I had to, like, let go of, like, my closest friends in order to, like, I guess, level up. Um, to separate, it was to like elevate. A, yeah, it was like a, it was like an anchor holding me back. And I had to learn to accept that, which was fine. Um, but I have new friends now that do support me instead of me like chasing after like my longtime best friend or whatever it is, you know, like I, th- she wasn't really supporting me or whatever. And then now I have people that I just met like a month ago that are like, Hey, what are you doing here? Hey, sharing your music, like doing this. And I'm like, man, it's a complete stranger. Yeah. And they're supporting me more. So I'm like, I don't expect Beautiful. anything from anyone anymore. If you want to support me, support me, great. Like, there's always going to be people out there that are going to support you. Facts. Very so, well the said. closest people to me, like, just sit back, wait, and, like, I'll show you. You know what I mean? Stay tuned, buckle up. And I and I have, like, my family, number one, is they're very tough on me, and I've always been in the arts, so they're kind of used to that. They're used to me performing, you know, all that stuff. So, it took them a while to be, like, hey Chrissy like you're actually doing good okay to come around yeah like I'm like the well, you're only black two years, sheep two years in <laughs> true but they they want everything now you yeah, know what I mean like yeah. oh you're an artist like why aren't you want performing with Bad Bunny I'm like what? <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> doesn't work like that <laughs> like damn you know yeah. so I just say like just yeah not with Bad Bunny yet I'll give you time yeah. just speaking of Bad Bunny thing. what are some other artists you'd like to do music with and records with Shoot your shot. I'm trying to do this segment here, the shoot your shot segment. Ooh, well, I really want to work with Pharrell. Pharrell, if you're out there, incredible, great answer. Hit me if you're up. Listening. And we know you are. Hit me up. If you're listening. We know you are. I Pharrell. would love. I would love to pick your brain. Um, shot A. Incredible. Shot A is wow. my. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like <laughs> my biggest, one of my biggest inspirations. That's pretty crazy. So to huh? do something with her would be amazing. Awesome. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, every episode we do a big three, which is like a, this game we play. It's a draft where you pick one thing, I pick one thing, you can go all the way up to three. Okay. And we pick a topic. Usually I like the conversation, dictate where the big three goes. Uh, our first time meeting, so there's a lot of ways we could take it. But I like aliens. Aliens is fun. Oh oh. Yeah. So um, are you like? Have you seen a lot of alien movies or TV shows? Cause there's a lot. There's a lot of alien content out. There's like you know. Yeah. I mean, I saw Stranger Things. Oh, that's alien stuff too. Yeah, that's right. I love Stranger Things. I haven't gotten into it yet, but that's that. That's a pick. So let's do our top three alien of uh, films or TV shows. <sighs> no. Okay. What's a good big three then? Do you want to make a suggestion? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Okay, we could go back to the music. It has to be mu- movies? It could be anything. We could do, like, we could do bad things. We've done, like, you know, super villains before. We've done uh, food. We've done appetizers. Let's do desserts. You like desserts? No, but no. let's do <laughs> okay, it. Okay, no, what do you like then? <laughs> What's your favorite thing about a meal? 
if you could do appetizer, entree, or desserts, like, what's your favorite? Is it the entree? Is it, like, the main thing? Yeah, I'm a fat girl. Okay, cool. So... I want it all. <laughs> top three entree, Top three entrees of all time. We don't have to big do specific locations, but top three entrees that are traditionally always going to hit. Now, we're going to go one by one. Whatever you pick, I can't pick. And I go guest, first? Yeah, guest always goes first. Yes. Uh, a burger and fries, baby. What type of burger and what type of fries? Can we be a little bit more specific for the audience? A uh, Wagyu burger. Okay. With some lettuce. How do you like the burger cooked? Medium. Okay, and what do you like on it? Not too juicy, not too, like, hockey puck. Um, okay. I like to put, like, onions. They mm-hmm. could be grilled or pickled. Okay. I just like onions. Beautiful. Uh huh. They have to have pickles. Well, I have to have the dill pickle. In the burger or on the side? On the side. Awesome. Love pickles. No diddy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) LOL. And any other details for the fries? I don't like tomatoes, so no tomatoes. No tomatoes. Okay. Um, I don't like mayo either, so it has to be like. What's what's the sauce? Do you like any sauce on the burger at all? You kind of like ketchup. Ketchup on the burger or on the side? On the burger and the side. Just in case. Do the double dip. Love it. Okay. Um, I'll do, uh, I'll keep it simple. Do a nice, uh, nice filet mignon. And I'll do medium. Straight up. Nice. Uh, right, what's your second entree that you like? Un churraco with arroz y frijoles y maduros. Awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm like a little baby. I just ate a huge meal and the, your picks are making me hungry. That's really good. Listen, with the yeah. chimichurri on the side. Mm. Wow. And then, look, this is the perfect bite. You ready? Well, my perfect bite. You cut up the steak, you know, a little, little piece. You got a scoop of rice and beans, and then you top it with the maduro on the top. Oh, my and then- God. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> I thought I was the only so one. So you're on game. Yeah. It's kind of like. You're missing uh, out. We are, we're all living the same life. We just don't know it. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay, so... Not I'll, us going like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody listening to this at home is like, these fat fucks got a great idea. So is the churaco. <laughs> but everybody says I eat so weird. Because I'm like very... Again, I'm OCD about weird shit. I'm like OCD about like the rice and it has to be like all neat and then the thing has to so be perfect. So you segregate your food? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's just being organized. And well, not really. So, wh- wh- what do you do weird when Sorry, you I eat? Tickle. It's okay. Um, it just has to be like the perfect bite every time, every time. I love that you savor and plan every yeah. bite. It's it's a, it's a great way to look at food. And True fat girl food. life. That's the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's the right way to do it. Um, so, uh, my sec- we're, we're at two, right? My second pick would be. Hmm, I would raise your churraco with some vaca frita, some nice good old vaca frita. I never liked it when I was growing up, but carnivore now... Carnivore over here. You did two m- meat I options did, too. Did, it's did. carnivore over here. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, vaca frita is fire. And I've recently, you know, had it and I've, I'm kind of craving it. I haven't had it in a while, so that's kind of fire. So I'll, I'll raise your churraco with some vaca frita. These are for, very Miami answers. Yeah, everybody that's not from Miami listening at home, like, do some research. I'll drop pictures for you guys, but... Fire. All uh, so far, meat, uh, dishes, carnivores, like we mentioned, but great picks. Where's the mashed potatoes? Yeah, you've been giving sides. I've been just kind of giving the entree, which is awesome. I love the detail you're giving, which is great. Um, I'm just kind of on some, like, this protein binge right now, so I'm just focused on the entree for whatever reason. Just the you on the keto? No, I'm just uh, oh. big and fat. I'm on the <laughs> fat so, <laughs> so <laughs> trying to slim so. <laughs> Yeah, I recently got, like, a coaching, and the guy just told me, you got to eat, like, X, whatever your weight is, you got to eat that much amount and X Ugh. amount in grams of protein. And I've been fasting for a long time in my life, and I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't the healthiest way to do it. Uh, so, yeah, now I'm kind of just changing it. It's, it's hard. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. hey, mm-hmm. number third, what's your third draft pick for the big three? Oh, my God. Best entree. For all the guys listening at home, they're like, oh, this is where I'm taking her on a date. Yeah, this is the take entree. notes, fellas. Yeah. Um... Okay, the third one. Jeez. You have everything. You could pick it. And this is just for this I episode. I know, but when I'm just come so... When you come back, we could do... I'm such like a... I wouldn't say I'm picky, but like... Ooh, I know. Tacos. Nice. What kind of tacos? 
I like birria tacos. Fire. Slaps. Yeah. Slaps. Um, I don't really like chicken. I really like dolphin tacos. That's fire. But it has to be like by the water. <laughs> I gotta have all the vibes. <laughs> it has to it has to sell me on the water. <laughs> you know, the dolphin's gonna come from the water. But as long as I'm by the water, it feels good. <laughs> Wait, dolphin? What? No, but I'm saying like if you're eating at a restaurant that's on the water, it's high uh, 90 yeah. percent chance the dolphins didn't come from that water that well, you're at. it's okay but it's in the air it's in it's the like air the aroma when you're oh. taking the bite like got you got you got sea. you well yeah i mean seafood's typically fishy in general if you're in a seafood yeah restaurant. <laughs> that's the only like seafood i would really like you're not big into seafood the thing is like when i was super into fitness Back in the day, in my twenties and stuff. Um, I mean, I, I'm still you still am. are. I was about to say, it's swole. Guns. Your arms must be tired. It's <laughs> huge. I did shoulders yesterday. <laughs> Your so shoulders thank must you. be tired. <laughs> um, no, but I used to do like crazy, like um, three day like reset detoxes and stuff like that. So I had like a fish and cucumber that I would do. What type of fish? Like it has to be like white fish. So I would get okay. like tilapia or. The man-made fish. Yeah. Created in a lab. Not even real. Yeah, well, I ate a lot of it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that grossed you out from fish? A little bit, a little bit, yeah. uh, For breakfast, lunch, uh, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, fish, cucumber. I'm sure you get gout. I'm sure that's not healthy. That's that much is crazy. It's only for three days. Oh, but only those three specific days, and then you got off it. Mm-hmm. How often would you do that? Mm, probably like every six months. Jeez. Wow. Dreaded. And I'm every sorry. So the, the third pick was tacos. You have like one mahi taco, one birria taco, and what's the third one? Another birria? You're gonna have two videos and one fish taco. No, maybe like a. What's that spicy type of meat? There's um. I think you're talking about um. Jeez. It's not ca- uh, ca- 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 <laughs> Wow, I'm so burnt. Al pastor, no, no al pastor. Al pastor. Al pastor. No. My dad did it with the. It's like icon. shredded. It's like shredded meat. Oh, shredded meat. Um, barbacoa. There Bar- it is. Yeah, yeah. Barbacoa. Barbacoa. That's fire. So mm-hmm. speaking of fish and seafood, my third pick is gonna be. Uh, was that your Was that your pick? N- Wait, did, no. Did I take it? No, no. Well, I mean, not specifically, no. Oh. Uh, my third pick will be, I'll say a nice, you know, I was going to say seafood, but actually say I'm going to say some some fettuccine alfredo. Fettuccine alfredo mm. is a fire entree, and we didn't say pasta. Then. How can you not go, go pasta? You no, know? I'm not a fan. Pasta is great. Fettuccine alfredo. I not, like pasta. Real Italians are going to hear this and be like, that's not even a real pasta. What's, what's wrong with this guy? It's not even a real Italian dish. It's American. <laughs> but it's, it's good. You know, I, I love fettuccine alfredo. It was made right. It's fire. And if you add a protein, that's that's kind of what I do. I get a, a separate dish altogether. I'll get like, you know, some seafood or something, even though a lot of people hate on seafood with pasta. I love it. And we do end episodes with a message to the I people. What's a message you'd like to leave the people with? Um, Just... I guess live life um, positively and like, is that a, did I say that word, right? I felt like you were doing like for dogs, like pause, uh, pause, positively. Like, just, know, like just positive vibes all day. Um, Animals. <laughs> like lead with love. Um, that's a big thing for me. Like I'm just a very like genuinely nice person and I, I don't want to do this by myself. So I need like, you know, I want people to be in my corner and I want like a... I don't know, like a community of people. And I think that we're forgetting that a lot. Everybody's so, like, egotistical and, in own, and in, so... In our own worlds. Yeah, you're in time. your own world, but, like, you can't do it by yourself. So I would just say just spread positivity, spread love, and just be a good human. That's really all we need. And I need you to... Ding! And I need you to tune in next week and check her out everywhere right here. We'll be back. Thanks for listening, guys. It's the Aircast. Peace.